good morning my dears again meet you through this uh, videos i'm so happy uh, the first thing i want to insist to you dears uh, be safe and secure so again the pandemic starts so uh, from my part of thing i'm i'm telling you i'm just advising you be careful avoid going outside right uh, stop uh, going for the public places uh, ensure your safety first right my dears okay let us move on to the uh, next uh, <coughs> second unit right starts with the pros uh, that is a nice cup of tea right as i told you already uh, we will start with this uh, lesson but unfortunately right the time didn't permit us to go for this lesson so once again <coughs> i am just asking you to listen the class pro i mean clearly so that you can uh, you can you can hear whatever things i'm just uh, sharing uh, right okay so if you have book uh, please turn to page number uh, 37 right so this page number 37 carries as usual right the author note what is this author note right so uh, for all the prose uh, as well as the supplementary reader and poem author note is very very important so throughout the first unit right we have read about the authors and a few points you are supposed to write when you are writing for the uh, paragraphs right my dears okay let us move on to the author note i'll just read it out or uh, listen or you just check with the book fine so eric arthur blair was uh, a better known for by his pen name george orwell george orwell right so if you say eric arthur blair right it is it's a very you know a new name but if you say george orwell means everyone knows about it right so his actual name is uh, eric arthur blair and but his pen name right he used to be called as george orwell right was an english novelist essayist journalist and a critic whose work is marked by a clear prose awareness of social right so he is a essayist a novelist a journalist and a critic works so we have seen uh, one more critics in the first unit right do you remember or not one more critic we have seen in the first unit right so this lesson talks about a preparation of a nice cup of tea so you i just want to want to tell you one thing everyone right uh, can prepare a cup of tea but at the same time how many of will prepare a nice cup of tea so there are difference right to prepare a cup of tea as well a nice cup of tea so if i say you a nice cup of tea means everyone will think about how to prepare a nice cup of tea when i ask you to prepare a cup of tea right it is a it is no is a is an idiom a nice cup a, a, a cup of tea that means what it is a easy task to prepare a cup of tea but at the same time right a nice cup of tea means everyone will get lax right so uh, just think about this author george orwell right he has written a prose right of preparing a nice cup of tea then just think about how much he you know he you know he involved himself in preparing a nice cup of tea then how much he is addicted to this a cup of tea right everyone knows right a, a cup of tea means you know that will stimulate you stimulate us if you feel tired right or if you feel something you know you are not comfortable definitely will go for a, a cup of tea either a cup of coffee but this lesson turns no about a preparation of uh, a cup of tea right and now just turn to page number uh, 34 it is in the i mean old book right you just take with a new edition uh, what a page number is given right so uh, a nice cup of tea by george orwell right so whenever uh, we are uh, getting to the lesson right two things you are supposed to do one is you should learn or you should thorough with the the, the I mean, title of the prose as well the author name so author name spell right is very very important when you are writing for the paragraphs so g e o r g e o r w e l l george orwell right a nice cup of tea by george orwell right so they have first you can see a pink box it is given here are a few varieties of tea how many of these have you tasted tick the boxes it is clearly given right so they have given they have listed the uh, six uh, different types of teas right the first one is herbal tea right uh, uh, if you go for in uh, you know, a hill station right you can you can taste this herbal tea especially there you can get a pure i mean uh, a herbal tea right i mean instead of for the plains and second one is iced tea it's very rare right if in in cold regions like uti kodai can only make get this iced tea and the lemon tea you know very well right uh, even everywhere you can get this lemon tea it is very i mean famous nowadays and the green tea right it is it will be very bitter in taste once i had this you know i, I just uh, i don't want to uh, 
uh, anymore to drink this uh, green tea very bitter and taste and it's very good for health especially uh, people like me right obesity right and fine black tea right black tea you know without uh, adding milk right we call it as black tea and tea with the milk right so normally we will have a cup of tea especially tea with the milk and some of you guys will like a black tea it is very important right you know it is very very uh, you know it is very quite common in uh, village size rural areas right a black tea and little hi-fi you can go for herbal tea right it's very very good uh, you know important for our health right so these are the important different types of teas they have a lesser out uh, on the first page and if you see the second thing it is they have given four pictures right so you'd have seen lovely packets of tea on shelves in supermarkets on the shops yes of course if you go to supermarkets you can see uh, different brands of uh, tea packets will be uh, kept on the shelves that will attract you that will tempt to right yes even i have seen a lot of uh, teas different branded uh, teas right taj mahal three roses and a lot of uh, tea varieties we have uh, we know right and different types of tea uh, packets will be kept uh, on the shelves that will attract uh, right a customer okay this will be good or that will be good right we may have a confusion we may have a dilemma which one will be good right it is very hard task to choose uh, which is uh, now a uh, good uh, i mean brand right and they have listed out uh, what is the process involving in uh, preparation of that tea dust right we are not supposed to say tea powder rather it should be uh, said as you know it should be called as tea dust right fine so the the first thing it is you know from the forest right they are packing the tea leaves first of all they'll take the tea leaves and they will put some process they will they the, those tea leaves will be undergone some uh, process and it will be uh, passed through the conveyor right and finally a lot of process and after that we will get the uh, tea uh, dust i mean tea, we used to call it as tea powder right fine so you can see the pictures it will be easy for you to understand how are the process are involved uh, in preparing the uh, tea dust right okay let us move on to the lesson so as i told you i thought of, i was very interested right uh, uh, to take uh, uh, especially this uh, particular prose in the class but unfortunately right time doesn't uh, permit us for this thing right definitely otherwise you know it will be uh, you know you'll enjoy this lesson right fine i'll just bring those things inside uh, here right so read the following essay in george orwell uh, highlights the distinctive features of preparing an ice cup of tea so this lesson talks about the preparation of a nice cup of tea as you know very well right so everyone can prepare a cup of tea even i myself i'll prepare a, a cup of tea rather a nice cup of tea and i hope you guys you know you'll prepare rather it is nice cup of tea or a cup of tea right that is up <laughs> you know about the truth right fine so this lesson george orwell he has listed out a certain points to prepare a nice cup of tea he didn't talks about a cup of tea rather he used the term a nice cup of tea right so what are things he has to use right and we will move on to the lesson right start with page number 35 my dear right so if you look up on the tea in the first cookery book that comes to your hand you will probably find that it is unmentioned or at most you will find a few lines of sketchy instruction which give uh, no ruling on the several of the most important points so the first paragraph what he talks the first paragraph if you look up the tea right so in the beginning i used to you know i, I love uh, you know cooking so uh, sometimes i used to buy some uh, recipe books right or preparing chicken biryani or mutton biryani or my most favorite there is tomato rice right so when i used to prepare when i used to buy this uh, i mean recipe books i used to search a lot of pages so through i mean all through the pages i never seen about the preparation of a cup of tea rather i have seen a lot of recipes right a lot of south indian recipes as well as north indian dishes but i have never come across to prepare a, i mean a cup of tea so in the same thing if you prepare, if you want to you know if you buy a cookery book that will never carries how to prepare a cup of tea right and though it is unmentioned or at most you will find a few lines of sketchy instruction so if at all if you find uh, the preparation of a cup of tea only the surface level that's what he has used the word called a sketchy that means what are the surface level you can come across how to prepare a tea not a nice cup of tea right so which no ruling on the several of the most important points you will never come across or you will never see to prepare a nice cup of tea especially in the cookery books right the first paragraph is over we'll move on to the second paragraph right this is curious not only because it is more one of the most main stages of civilization in the country especially he belongs to england right so especially in this that the word this talks about the country england right 
So this is curious, right? It is curious, right? Not only because the tea is one of the main states of civilization in the country. So tea is one among the civilization that is there in the England, right? Not only in England. What are the countries they have? Uh, it has included Ire, E I R E. The the word how you are to pronounce the word is Ire, E I R E. So so tea it is considered as a civilization not only in England as well in Ire, then Australia and New Zealand. But because the best manner of making it is the subject of violent disputes, so all the countries they have uh, right uh, the preparation rules still right yet. There are a lot of disputes. There are a lot of problems. There are a lot of confusions, right? How to prepare a nice cup of tea, right? So just think about the tea. The tea acts as a civilization in England, Ireland, Australia, as well as New Zealand. Then just think about how people are giving importance to the a single cup of tea, right? We may say that a single cup of tea, but for them it is, you know, it you know it is one among a I mean a mainstays of civilization, right? So they will move on to the third paragraph. <clears throat> when I look uh, through my own recipe for the perfect cup of tea, I find no fewer than eleven outstanding points. How much? Eleven outstanding points to prepare a, a cup of, I mean, a nice cup of tea. On perhaps two of them, there would be pretty general agreement. So among the eleven outstanding points, two points are are generally accepted by everyone. How many? Two points out of eleven, two points are accepted by everyone. But at the same time, four points others are acutely controversial, completely confused, confused completely. It's problematic. How many? Four. So among the eleven, two points generally accepted by everyone, but four points are completely controversial. Controversial means that is one of confusion or it's a dilemma or it's a problematic. Right. So here are my own eleven rules, every one of which I regard as the golden. So here he has given eleven important rules to prepare a nice cup of tea, and he called it as the golden rules. Right, my dear. So he has stated eleven important golden rules to prepare a, a nice cup of tea. Right, my dear. So right. we will move on to the first <coughs> rule. See, think about. We will never enjoy, you know, to have a cup of tea. But the foreigners, they will enjoy every sip, right, my dears? So he has given eleven important points, right? And we will go on uh, with the one by one, right? Starting with the first point. What is the first point? First of all, one should use Indian or Ceylonian tea. And he is a England fellow, but he prefers two teas. One is the Indian tea or the Ceylonian tea. Then think about how much our Indian tea it is worth. Right, comparing with you know tea, no tea, they are cultivating almost uh, in all the cold regions, especially right in foreign in in, in foreign countries. But he didn't mention their uh, tea; rather, he uses Indian tea as well as Ceylonian tea. So the best cup of tea, that means he prefers Indian tea. Fine. So first of all, one should use Indian or Ceylonian tea. So the 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 choose what to choose Indian tea. China tea has virtues which are not to be despised nowadays. It is economical, and you know very well the China right, the dominant right act of or the rule of China. Even it is there in the tea also, right. So if you go to a shop, you can see all the China products, including right all the electronic things, right on all the things you can see China products. It is waste very less. Uh, I mean cheap products as well. China tea is also one among. It has some virtues, but what he says. Not to be despised nowadays. It is economical. It is very cheap, and one can drink uh, it without milk. So, if you use Chinese, I mean Chinese uh, tea dust, you can drink without milk. I mean the raw, I mean the black tea, like black tea, you can drink the China tea. But there is not much stimulation in it. But you won't find any stimulation, right? When you feel tired, or when you feel uh, sleepy, or when you feel something discomfort, you know, uh, definitely what we will have a. Uh, A cup of tea. If you if you have a cup of tea which is made up of which is made by uh, which is uh, no Chinese tea. If you drink a Chinese tea, you will never feel any stimulation, right? I mean, uh, comparing with the other teas. So he doesn't uh, right refer the Chinese tea. He uses only two things, right? One is the Indian tea as well as the Ceylonian tea, right? 
by the reason much stimulation in it it one does not feel wiser braver or more optimistic after drinking it so a person who drinks this chinese tea will never feel as if he is okay is comfortable or he is okay no fine with the opt mean a positive thought he will never say or you will never come across these kind of positive approaches when you drink a, a chinese tea right anyone uh, who has used that comforting phrase a nice cup of tea invariably means indian tea what he says invariably it is indian tea so if you want to have a nice cup of tea that is invariably means definitely he prefers one and only the indian tea not even the ceylonese tea but he uses ceylonese tea but nice cup of tea means invariably definitely damn sure it is indian tea right so the i mean what you have to prepare the tea that is indian tea second point so first thing it is what to choose indian tea second what is second point secondly tea should be made in small quantities yes of course right uh, tea should be made in small quantities you know if you see in some house they'll prepare they'll 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 prepare tea in such a big vessels if you use big vessels to prepare a nice cup of tea means you won't get the nice cup of tea rather you'll get a a tea that's all what i'm using tea not a nice cup of tea so if you want to prepare a nice cup of tea right the I mean the vessel it is very very important so the second point what he talks about in the, what he I mean uh, says in the uh, second point that is usage you know, what we have to use what should be used what should be used small quantity of pot should be used to prepare a nice cup of tea rather than a large quantity that is in tea pot so if you want to prepare a, a cup of tea means a nice cup of tea means you have to go for a small quantity that especially you have to prepare by using a teapot tea out of urn is always tasteless while army tea made in cauldron tastes of uh, grease and whitewash so if you use uh, the tea that is an urn it's a no a bigger one you won't get uh, a good taste rather if uh, in in army the people they in, in army the soldiers used to prepare right in a cauldron cauldron is a big vessel made up of uh, iron right and if you taste that kind of tea army tea that will taste you like uh, how you feel you know you will taste the grease and then whitewash you can you can you can smell that whitewash uh, smell in the tea and that will it's, it will slightly right you can get the smell of a grease right so army tea won't give you a nice cup of tea as well as right you know uh, i mean tea preparation using of a, a, a larger quantity pots right it won't give you a nice you know a taste you have to go for only a tea pot that should be in a small quantity right tea pot should be made of china or earthen way so the second thing it is right how you have to make right what you have to use the second thing it is a china or earthen way what he says china or earthen way so to prepare a nice cup of tea especially you have to go for a tea pot and the tea pot should be made up of either a china ware otherwise right Uh, earthen ware right silver or britannia ware uh, tea pots uh, produce inferior tea and enamel pots are worse silver ware you know what is this britannia so this britannia it is an alloy right it is a combination of a tin and a copper right britannia ware that means you know nowadays it is not there right uh, in i mean chemistry you may uh, read about this britannia ware so britannia ware it is uh, uh, an, an alloy like a silver it is a combination of tin and a copper so if you use britannia ware you won't get a, a very good taste right and it which produces an inferior taste that means what not a good taste and the second thing it is though curiously though uh, peter pot peter pot is also an alloy peter that is an alloy it is a combination of tin and lead so britannia ware it is a combination of uh, tin as well copper whereas the peter uh, alloy peter metal that is a combination of a uh, uh, tin as well as lead so if you prepare if you if you prepare a tea out of this uh, britannia ware or if you prepare the tea using a pewter or silver ware you won't get a good taste so you have to go for a, either a china ware otherwise an earthen ware right third point thirdly the pot should be warmed beforehand this is the better by done by placing it on the hob than by the usual method of swilling it out with the hot water right what is this morning of uh, swilling i think uh, if you have uh, you know, suppose if you go to uh, a tea shop right a bakery i mean carrying a flask to get a tea you know what they will do right they will just pour hot water 
they will make it they will shake it well and they will pour it outside right this is not the way to prepare no uh, i mean cup of tea so what you have to do is you should take the teapot you should you should keep it on the hob right on the burner and it has to be heated and then you have to fill the water then you have to shake it and you have to throw it away that's all this is the way right you, you are not supposed to take a hot water you have to shake it well and then put no no if you if you if you follow this one definitely won't get a good taste so you have to keep it in the burner and fill the water little amount of water then it has to be you know then you have to heat it and after that only you have to remove the water from the teapot right and fourth what is the fourth point right so out of 11 we have seen three points right and fourth what is the fourth point fourthly the tea should be strong for a pot holding a quart q u a r t what does this mean by q u a r t the q u a r t uh, it is used uh, uh, for uh, it is actually it's a it is a measurement it is, is a measure uh, it is about of 1 liter right uh, if you see in england they will they, if you see in england if quart means you know uh, it is of uh, uh, about 1 liter in american that uh, if you use american term quart that means it is less than little less than 1 uh, liter whereas if you use uh, uh, British English quad, that means you know little higher to the one liter, right? So fourth, your tea should be strong. If you drink, uh, if you have a cup of coffee, means I mean a tea means strong. The tea should be strong. If the tea powder, if it is not a sufficient level, they won't uh, taste the tea, right? So fourthly, tea should be strong. For a pot holding a quart, suppose if you want to prepare uh, a one liter of tea, means how much spoons you need to add right he has given if you are going to fill it nearly to the brim you know brim that means surface of the top level that is a tea, brim right so if you want to prepare the brim level like about of one liter tea then how many teaspoons of uh, tea dust has to be added right six heap you know heap that is uh, heap you know take for example this is uh, i mean okay a tea means this 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 you know this is said to be heap right so six uh, heap spoons of uh, uh, tea dust has to be added right to prepare a one liter of tea a strong tea in a time of rationing this is not an idea that can be realized on every day of the week so every day you cannot go for uh, six uh, spoons of tea to prepare or uh, to have a nice cup of tea definitely that will it will cost you much so what he says right every time you cannot go for uh, what is it called uh, six uh, teaspoons of uh, tea to have a cup of tea to have a cup of nice tea rather what he says I imagine that one strong cup of tea is better than 20 weak ones. So if you, how, what is the calculation he has uh, uh, made, you know, right? 20 ordinary cups of tea, it is equal to one st strong cup of tea, right? So 20 ordinary cup of tea is equal to one strong cup of tea. And moreover, he likes that one, one cup of tea rather drinking of, rather going for 20 ordinary teas, right? So all two tea lovers not only like that tea is strong, but it like a little stronger with each year passes, a fact which is recognized in the extra ration used to for the oldest pensioners, right? So every year the tea lovers, right, they will improve their taste every year. So first year, if they add one spoon, second year, they'll go for one and a half spoon or two spoons and, th and third year, they'll go for three spoons and fourth year, fifth, I mean, four spoons like that. The, the strong, right, that will be improved for the tea lovers, right? Fifthly, the tea should be in a uh, put straight into the pot, no strainers, muslin bags or other devices to imprison the tea. And if you see sometimes, you know, uh, in uh, some bakeries, they'll prepare a tea, right, using of, right, the muslin bag, you know, the dip tea, they used to say, you know, dip tea, you know, uh, 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 I mean, a small packet will be there, will be tied with a rope and you, and you should uh, dip the tea, you should immerse the tea inside the milk and then you can, the, the, the tea extract will be absorbed the tea extract will be reaches the tea so you are not supposed to use this kind of muslin bags or strainers if you see in the hotels or in, in the bakeries they'll have a long pouch so they will you know they will put the tea dust inside that and they will mix water with that they will take and you can get the essence of the tea right so you're not supposed to you follow these two things right to get a, a nice cup of tea right so no strainers muslin bags or other devices to imprison the tea and moreover in some countries teapots are fitted with a, a little dangling basket under the a spout to catch stray leaves right if you see some other countries they will use a small you know bag or you, they will use a small you know what he has used a spout to catch the stray leaves right so they they will they will put the tea leaves inside the teapot and at the end 
in the that a wall no they'll have a i mean uh, i mean uh, a filter so when they pour it the tea the tea slaves will be you know it will be filtered and you can get the real tea so what he says actually one can swallow tea leaves in considerable quantities without ill effect and the tea is not loose in the pot it never infuses properly so what he says it is nothing wrong if you even if one or two tea leaves reaches your intestine that will never harm you like anything a right? considerable amount of tea leaves will never harm you anything right and moreover what he says the tea leaves should be directly put into the burner put into the water right you are not supposed to use any muslin muslin bags or any dip tea or these things should not be done while to prepare a nice cup of tea right the tea powder it has to be straightly put into the what that i mean tea pots right so so far we have seen about five important points first one it is right uh, what tea has to be used indian tea and second thing it is pot what pot uh, either earthenware otherwise chinaware and what is in the third one it is given you know uh, how to wash or how to clean that teapot right the teapot has to be placed on the hob it should be boiled right not way not the other way of putting the hob in filling the hot water inside no right and the fourth point it is water i mean six uh, tea uh, spoons the heap recipe uh, two teaspoons will be used to, to have a uh, i mean uh, uh, one liter of uh, paka tea right and the fifth one it is water right even one or two tea, two uh, leaves if it goes inside not will nothing that troubles you right and moreover what he says in the fifth you know right uh, the tea powder should be directly put into the right tea pots right so hope you understood uh, this five important uh, golden rules right the remaining things we will see in the next class maybe right so once again just have uh, go through in the book so uh, line by line just go through so that will helps you to learn or that will helps you to observe or that will helps you to you know uh, catch uh, you know still uh, better uh, thing right so see you in the next class media take care bye bye